In today's Star Wars Empire War video, we'll be looking at some of the best ships you can use in Empire War Fall of the Republic. This video is specifically for the Galactic Republic faction, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for the Confederacy video. With that all said and done, let's dive right into it. We'll start with the smaller ships and gradually move upward. Starting with the Corvettes and the only Corvette in this video, the CR-90, otherwise known as the Carillion Corvette, is definitely the best one to go with. With 500 hull and 500 shields, it is able to take down fighters, interceptors and bombers with ease. As it comes equipped with two heavy dual rapid laser cannons and four medium rapid laser cannons. Rapid laser cannons is a new feature in Fall of the Republic and it is specifically used to take down fighter units. So if you have a bunch of these CR 90s together, they can take down batches of fighter swarms very, very easily now. Not to mention, the heavy dual rapid laser cannons can also take out concussion missiles from afar. So if you surround these around your capital ships, you're actually providing defense capabilities that your capital ship wouldn't be able to provide for itself. Concussion missiles are known to do extraordinary amounts of damage to hard points, so negating these with the CR-90s is absolutely paramount. Not to mention, they can also boost firepower as their active ability meaning they can double up their firepower at the expense of their shield regeneration. In Galactic Conquest, you definitely need to surround these around your bigger ships, but in Skirmish Mode, you only need one or two in the early game, and bumping that up to four or five in the mid to late game. Next up is the small frigates, and what wouldn't be this video if we didn't involve the Arkisons? It comes in at 1,100 hull and 1,000 shields, being quite weak for a light frigate, but they make up for themselves with an enormous amount of weaponry. Equipped with two medium dual turbo lasers, two two medium quad laser cannons and two concussion missiles, this can take out any other light frigate or carrier on the enemy team. But in batches of 5 and 6, it can actually take out heavier frigates like the Munificent Star Frigate. Next up on the frigate list is the Carrot Cruiser. Matching these up with the Arkisons and the CR-90 is a dream trio for both Skirmish and in Galactic Conquest. The Carrot Cruiser comes in at 1,400 hull and 1,400 shields, making it a much tankier ship compared to the Arkisons. Alongside that, it comes with two heavy turbo lasers, and two medium laser cannons, making them much more effective on their own to take out structures like asteroids or small building structures. And because they are much more tankier, they can be used as the front line for your Arkisons, your CR-90, and possibly other ships like the Acclimator. Now we move on to some of the heavier frigates. There's quite a collection of Acclimator variants that you can choose from in Fall of the Republic, but without a doubt, the Acclimator 1 carrier loadout is one of the best that you can pick. The Acclimator 1 carrier loadout comes with 2,200 hull and 1,800 shields. They can spawn two fighters and two bombers and replenish them twice over and comes equipped with two light quad turbo lasers, two light laser cannons and two proton torpedoes. Whilst it has the least amount of hull and shields compared to the missile loadout and the acclimator 2, this ship is a jack of all trades. It's a carrier for fighters and bombers. It can deal a certain amount of damage with its turbo lasers but it can also deal excessive amounts of damage with its active ability to boost its weapon power. Whilst it might be tempting to build the missile loadout for its extra stats and its firepower, as long as you support this ship with carrot cruisers on the front line and CR-90s as anti-bomber measurements, this acclimator will beat out all the other variants by a large margin. If you have a lack of information in Galactic Conquest or a lack of vision in skirmish mode, the Acclimator carrier loadout will probably be the best choice for pushing forward for more ground. Not to mention the bombers it spawns can do devastating damage to other heavier frigates. But if you do not support this ship with other smaller units, it can definitely be one of the worst of the three. So accumulate and deploy your fleets accordingly with this one. If you have plenty of support units and fighters as it is and just looking for straight damage, the Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser is a much better option coming in at 2,200 hull and 2,200 shields. So a little more tankier than the Acclimator Carrier Loadout, but it comes with two heavy dual turbo lasers, two medium iron cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and two light quad laser cannons. So perfect for all terms of damage across the board. Next on our list is the smaller Star Destroyers. Without a doubt, the Venator Star Destroyer is one of the best ships on this list, coming in at 3,240 hull and 3,000 shields. It can spawn two fighters and two bombers three times over, and its armament is godly, coming in at four heavy dual turbo lasers, two medium dual turbo lasers, two medium turbo lasers, two light dual laser cannons, and two proton torpedoes. So pretty much an acclimator, but on steroids. But just like the acclimator carrier 
loadout, you do need a frontline and CR90s for extra additional support. It is by far one of the weakest Star Destroyers in this entire lineup in terms of hull and shields, so do not put this ship down on its own against the enemy. If it is able to survive for a long period of time, its fighters and bombers can do so much damage on the field. Frontline units need to be a mix of Carrot Cruisers, Acclimators, or Dreadnought Heavy Cruisers, so just like the Acclimator Carrier loadout, that's what you need to do with this ship. Next up is the Victory 2 Star Destroyer. Coming in at 3,790 hull and 3,200 shields, this ship can spawn one fighter one time only and comes with four heavy turbo lasers, four medium dual turbo lasers, and two heavy iron cannons. The reason we're choosing the Victory 2 Star Destroyer over the Victory 1 in this instance is because in Fall of Republic, the concussion missiles in the Victory 1 variant do not bypass shields. Because of this, iron cannons are king, and that is what the Victory 2 2 is equipped with. The turbo lasers will do less damage to hard points when the shields are depleted, but being able to strip down shields is far more effective than trying to use concussion missiles when the shields are completely gone. And because of this, the Victory 1 is just too niche in certain situations, both in Galactic Conquest and in Skirmish Mode. This ship does do a lot more damage than the Venator Star Destroyer, but you have to understand this ship also needs support with a frontline. Moving on to the much bigger Star Destroyers, the Tecta class Star Destroyer is without a doubt one of the best Star Destroyers you can build in Fall of the Republic. Coming in at 9,218 hull and 9,000 shields, it spawns absolutely no fighters or bombers, but comes with 14 medium turbo lasers, two light turbo lasers, three medium laser cannons, one assault concussion missile, and one concussion missile. Because it is not equipped with hangar bays for fighters or any rapid laser cannons to take down enemy fighters, the Tech to Star Destroyer is without a doubt one of the best ships to use in 1v1 capital ship battles. It has enormous amounts of hull and shields, does enormous amounts of damage, and requires other ships like the Venator Star Destroyer and CR-90s for its defense capabilities. It is definitely a lot more expensive than the Imperiator Star Destroyer variant, but it absolutely decimates it in terms of damage output, hull and shields, and it's just cheaper to find smaller units that can spawn fighters and also take down enemy fighters and concussion missiles instead. And finally, moving on to super capital ships, it's without a doubt the Mandator 2 class star Dreadnought is the best ship you can buy for the Galactic Republic. Coming in at a massive 42,240 hull and 42,000 shields, it is able to spawn 5 fighters 3 times over and 2 bombers 3 times over, and comes with 20 ultra heavy turbo lasers, 22 heavy dual turbo lasers, 14 medium dual turbo lasers, 5 heavy quad iron cannons, 14 medium dual iron cannons, and 5 assault concussion missiles. Unless the enemy has a massive well rounded fleet, this ship is just not going to be taken down, without a doubt. Out. Moving on to our honourable mentions, the Pelta class support ship is a definite must in Galactic Conquest and Skirmish Mode. This ship isn't available until a little bit later on in the game, you must be tech level 4 in Skirmish Mode to build this, but mix one or two of these with your CR90s, because not only can it take out enemy fighters, but it can also heal hard points on much larger ships. So weaving them in between your capital ships or your heavy frigates is an absolute must. But not only that, its active ability to deploy into Dick mines serves a great purpose as it is able to generate a gravity well preventing enemies from escaping but also preventing the enemy from spawning ships too close to your fleet and that is a list of some of the best ships you can buy and build with the galactic republic faction do you agree with this list do you think i missed out any really important ships for both galactic conquest and skirmish let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below i read all of them and i'll get back to some of you as well and be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't don't miss out on the confederacy video but with that all said and done my name's been charlie you've been watching x2 and i'll see you in the next video take care guys